Okay guys, so we now have our idea and we want to start getting this into arrangement view. So remember, I showed you arrangement view earlier. This is arrangement view and this is how we sort of finish our track. We can play tracks live in session view, but to get it actually out as a finished MP3 file for DJs to play it needs to be along the time domain so it can be printed out as a full track and exported and then people can play it. So what's important to understand is that arrangement view and session view are two completely different entities pretty much. There's a few things that they share such as the mixer and if we go on to one of these that has some things on. So here we go, we've got some effects. So the effects, we've got the effects here on the shaker track. If we go into arrangement view and we go on the shaker track, those effects are still there. So this is something that's shared between them. So if I move this, it's exactly the same. The window is always going to be there and it always stays the same. And likewise, if I make a change to the mixer, so I'll turn it down to minus 16, it's now at minus 16. So these are one and the same. You see if I press command Z there, then it jumped back. If I press command shift Z, you can see it's jumping back and forth. So by the way, command Z is undo and command shift Z is to redo. So this is shared between arrangement and session view and so are these parts here. But what isn't shared by session view is the actual clips within the tracks. The clips and the notes within the tracks are unique to whatever view you're working in. So this is really important. So let's say we play some clips here and we want to record this into arrangement view. So for us to do that, obviously we can't see both the views at the same time. So we'll go back to the start of arrangement view. And now when I press play, the drums in session view, the ones that I selected are gonna start playing but we're not going to see them getting recorded into arrangement view yet. So all we have to do is use this record arrangement button at the top of the screen. So there's this one, which is for the arrangement. And then there's this one, which is for the session record. And if we go back into session view, we also have some other record buttons as well for the individual tracks and clips. So if I now press the arrangement record button, we can see that it's lit up red, it's highlighted in red, and it's recording into arrangement view. And if we look at this icon here, it says back to arrangement. It's saying that something is different from arrangement view to session view. And it's saying, because it's got these two play icons here, it's saying that these two tracks are different in session view and arrangement view. So if I click this, they stop straight away because this is what's happening in arrangement view. It's always gonna revert back to arrangement view. So to make a bit more sense of that, what we'll do is we'll drag something in. We'll drag in the pads, okay? And I'm gonna drag these. You can either press tab to go into the two views or you can just drag it onto the horizontal lines and vice versa. So if we go down to our pads and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna duplicate this out. Let's just tidy this up so you can see what's going on a little bit better and this is probably the most complicated concept to get in Ableton Live so once you've got this you pretty much understand everything you need to know about Ableton Live for the main concepts so I now have this playing and it's just going to carry on playing all the way through if I now go into session view and I'm going to launch another scene so I've now got this playing instead but if I look in arrangement view we're actually still playing this part of the timeline so this pad should be playing and that's why this button here if we look at info view in the bottom left it says back to arrangement so if I click this it's gonna it knows that there's a, a, a difference between session view right now and arrangement view we've also got another back to arrangement view there and it's saying you know uh, we know that you're trying out some ideas so I'm um, trying a few different clips but it's saying there's a difference between your arrangement view and your session view so do you want to go back to arrangement view so if I was to click that it doesn't matter where I click it it's going to jump back to this so you're thinking why is this useful and 
it seems a bit complex and it seems a bit unnecessary. I'll show you why. So if we jump back into arrangement view, and what we could actually do is we could select our entire session. We've got all of this. I'm going to select it all and I'm going to drag it across. And I'm just going to plonk it all. We'll go for bar 17. This is how we can bring in our entire parts and then we can go about and rearrange these how we want. So we could put things over here. We could delete parts. We could put the pads further over. We could then loop these pads or duplicate these pads. There's a bunch of different things we can do. But what I like to do is to get things into the arrangement in the same way that I play it is I like to just hit record and then I like to jam with my scenes. So we're going to do that now. So all we'll do is we'll press the record button. But if we press it as it is, it actually plays the playback as well. So to record arm it without playing the playback, all we have to do is press shift and then that will arm it ready to be played. Just to see that again, if we hold down shift and press record, record is armed, but it's not recording yet. And the playhead isn't moving. Just get rid of this. So now we go back to session view. And when I hit the intro, when I start this playing, it's going to be recording into arrangement view. So let's hit play. And we can see it's playing in. And we'll play the next scene. And at any time, I could hit one of these and it's going to go back to session, uh, back to arrangement view, sorry. So I'll turn off the pads. We'll continue. You can see the pads have cut back in there. So that was because I decided to click back to arrangement. Now we press stop and we've now played through our session and then here we have our arrangement you can see it's currently greyed out because as we know we need to click back to arrangement and now when we press play it's now playing our arrangement and we can see that we've got stuff going on in the mixer here but our clips oh, apart from that one that I've just accidentally pressed and now our clips are playing and you see that what I can now do as it's playing through is I can jam some different ideas so maybe for this section I want the rides in and the arrangement back to arrangement button comes on and if I look on this page you can see the rides it knows that this isn't the arrangement it knows that something else is going on here so I can click back to arrangement so what I'm going to do is just drag this out so it's how it's supposed to be And what we can do is loop this up and try out another idea. So we'll try putting this shaker in there. And as we expect, this button is lit up. And the shaker track knows that something is going on in session view that isn't the same as arrangement view. So what we can also do is we can even move parts around. So now when I press back to arrangement, once the playhead gets to here, instead of playing nothing, it's just going to carry on playing what was underneath it. So I'll do it now. And you can hear we don't hear a difference, but it's still jumping to the arrangement. And this is important to understand because, for example, you see here we've got no kick. So if we play this, we could try it with a kick. And now when I press back to arrangement, on either page, I'll do it on this one so you can see, then press this and all of the tracks are going to go back to the arrangement. 
including the kick, which is reverted back to no kick. So the difference between the two is if I push the button that appears here, it's going to do it for all the tracks. If I push the button that's here, it's going to do it for individual tracks. So here, let's just press play on the arrangement. And we just hit a few things. And we can see we've now got three things that are different. So maybe I only want to revert the bongos back to the arrangement. And the bass. And the hat. And we'll turn the loop off and let it carry on. And this goes on to my next point, is that we can make edits in arrangement view and they're not going to show up in session view. So I could, you know, go into this and we could draw a load of notes and we can see these notes appearing here. And this, we could rename it as well. We could consolidate it into one big clip and we'll rename it edited. Nowhere in session view are we going to find that clip. It doesn't exist in this view. Likewise, I could now go and delete all of this. And we've still got our track. It's still here. We've still got this. We can listen to this. But we now have absolutely nothing in session view. And if we wanted to, we could drag this into session view. We'll put it there. And we've now got the arrangement view, uh, back to arrangement button lit up. But what I'm going to do is just quickly mand and Z to bring back our session view. And then likewise, we could also edit or delete the entire of the arrangement view. And then we've still got our session view. We can still mess around and we can try again. So maybe we fleshed out an arrangement and it, we don't like the sound of it. We can just delete it and we can try again. But what I tend to find usually happens, if we bring the arrangement back, what usually happens is you'll be working in session view, you've built up all of your ideas, and then you'll go into arrangement view and you'll start making some edits. And then by the end, you're going to have an arrangement which is finished, it's going to have automation, it's going to have, you know, filtering and little edits here and there, you're going to be removing kicks and putting them back in in other places, and you're going to have all these tiny little edits. And you can build out your arrangement. And then it's going to be slightly different to session view, which is fine. What I'd do is just leave session view there. Uh, unless you're going to play live, you're not really going to need to use it again. But what you can also do is you can actually, you can actually go through and you can bring all these parts back into session view, either one at a time, or you could do it on a track by track basis by selecting everything and dragging it in like that. Or what you can also do is you can actually do it on a scene basis. So we could select this area here with this loop brace and we just right click consolidate time to new scene okay it's not going to let us do this because we're in live light but just to demonstrate what I'll do is I'll delete scene 8 so it will let us and now if we right click consolidate time to new scene so here we can see we've got pretty much every clip playing and I'll go back to session view and there it is So well done for making it this far because session view and arrangement view is a very complicated concept to get your head around for a beginner. If you don't understand it fully yet, do not worry. As long as you can sort of get your head around that this view and this view are different from one another. Most people start in session view. They build up a track. They drag it out into arrangement view like what we've done here. And then it is this point that we export our track and this arrangement view is the finished result not what's in session view unless you're going to play it live uh, like a, uh, a live set or you know as a DJ performance or with other musicians but in most cases if you're printing it out or you're exporting it to be a WAV file or mp3 or you're going to get it cut to vinyl then it's going to end up in the arrangement view and it's going to get exported which is what we're going to look at in the next video